thank you Merit for joining us today yeah. um cool. so I'm going to quickly run through if that's okay who you are so Merit yeah. uh, graduated from with in physics from Harvard and graduated with a PhD in atomic and laser physics from the University of Oxford so it's quite smart <laughs> um so you also pursue a, a career in ballet as well so how what was that yeah. like? how did you how did you mix those two uh fields together because it, it's never usually combined the arts and science no um and I never actually really thought that I was going to pursue both of them either of them or um both together mm -hmm. so I had started dancing when I was 13 and it was kind of a bribe from my mom she said that I had to take ballet to fix my posture so I like I had to take it for like a month um, she wanted to fix my posture and then I could do whatever I wanted. And I really wanted to do karate. But the minute I started dancing, um, I just fell in love. I was like, man, this is, it just felt so raw and authentic the way that I could express myself. And so that's what I wanted to do. But I had started dancing so late that everyone said that I would never make it as a professional ballet dancer. So I kind of thought that, um, you know, I, I sort of took that for granted, but I still loved to be in the room and I wanted to be the best that I could be. Um, and then later on, I, well, my whole life, I always loved math and puzzles. And when I heard about physics, which was kind of a practical use of math and that there were real problems and mysteries in the universe, I was like, that's what I wanna do. But I also had started that quite late and was told, you know, it's really hard to be a scientist and I wouldn't make it. Um, so part of me was just like, okay, I want to stay in the room for as long as I can. I want to learn as much as I can. And we'll just, I was just curious, like what the limit was and to see how far I could go. Mm -hmm. So I suppose you've kind of got your mom to, to thank for that because she's introduced you to the ballet side of it. What did they think about your career and everything you've achieved so far? I mean, they were, uh, oh yeah, but then when I continued with the dancing, my parents were like, that was not part of the plan. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> they're like, uh, you can stop now. <laughs> you could have stopped yesterday. Um, so yeah, um, uh, they, they were always very supportive. I think their main thing was that they wanted me to be happy in any way. So there was very little pressure on me growing up. Um, they really wanted me to be happy. And I think, they weren't so keen about the dancing, but they dealt with it. <laughs> <laughs> now they've like when I got into, so. um, yeah, well, like for instance, when I got into Boston Ballet, I remember I called up my dad being like, dad, dad, like I got into Boston Ballet. And his response was like, I know I heard the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> that was their response to the dancing. Um, so I think, you know, I, I, I'm sure that they're very proud. Um, I unfortunately lost my mother probably seven, like seven to eight years ago. So, um, uh, but I'm sure she's, you know, she's, you know, very support. She's always been the most supportive human mm. person. Yeah. And uh, someone has asked, um, being mm -hmm. an engineer must be cool because you get to build things. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> well, it's been, um, my background is physics, but I think, any type of that background really helps. So I pursued physics at Harvard and then my PhD in atomic and laser physics at Oxford. And then now I've been, um, during this lockdown, I've been isolated as most people are. I was dancing with ballet companies. Um, I'd gone back to dancing, but everything in the dance world closed down. And I was like, oh, I don't know what you know, it was so devastating for the arts world. Like, what are my, what are we going to do? Um, and so then I was like, hmm, funny that I was just uh, creating movement with a robot. <laughs> Who knew that a robot would be my only dance, dance partner, partner for a <laughs> very long time? So actually, I didn't plan this, but we're downstairs. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see. Oh, oh yeah, that's a robot. <laughs> There's, there's the robot wow. in the corner. Um, yeah, so it's, I think now I've kind of turned into a bit of a roboticist and like working with 
the robot and creating movement and um, yeah, who knew? But I think it, it having worked in a physics lab just makes um, and working with experiments that are never given really a manual. Like you're never you're never given how to really do an experiment because you're at the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. So you're having to put together equipment that's not meant to be put together, like and experimenting like things that no one has ever experimented with. So for me to be working with a robot that has an instruction manual is actually like I think most people would find it quite daunting to work with a robot, but given that my background in physics, I'm like, man, this is this is great. <laughs> There's actually instructions to this thing. There's like when it breaks, you know what's gone wrong. So uh, yeah, it's it's been really helpful to have that background. I was wondering, there was a video on you uh, of you on YouTube where you were dancing with the robot, and there seems to be a, a yeah. bit where you kind of lean over the robot. Is is there a certain weight that it has that it can take? Because uh, yeah. it looks like so, such a slender arm. Yeah, yeah. So technically, the robot can only take. 20 kilos and I weigh more than 20 kilos so in the video what you don't see is my back arm I'm lifting myself most of the time oh, okay. so anytime it looks like the robot's lifting me I'm actually doing all of the work mm -hmm. um, and putting very little weight on the robot yeah. which um yeah so it's a one-sided yeah. it's a one-sided um dance then really <laughs> Oh, it's totally one side. Yeah, I'm doing all the work. The robot's <laughs> yeah. doing no work. <laughs> um, how did you get into engineering, someone's asked. Um, I guess it was, uh, so I had done the PhD and then I was dancing and I was always really intrigued by how technology um, can inspire human creativity. Like how can you know, how can new tech and new research and new advances and experiments make us humans more creative? And so I've always been kind of exploring that side of it. And, um, and so now it's just been like exploring it with virtual reality or, virtu or with artificial intelligence or robots or motion capture, I've always been really intrigued by that. Um, but I think, yeah, if the question is kind of meaning STEM field, including science and physics, that was probably when I was, my first physics class was when I was 17. And is that when you first got interested in STEM? Um, no, well, I would say like my father would take my sister out and I out on the balcony every night and we'd look at the constellations and he would ask questions like, you know, do you think there's life out there? You know, what's dark matter? What do you think dark matter is? Are you going to solve what, you know, dark energy is? <laughs> um, you know, what's a black hole? Was there one big bang or was there like a big bounce? Like, did it happen multiple times? Like, why are we accelerating out? Um, so he would constantly ask us questions. So I think there was that fascination with the mysteries of the universe that I was always intrigued by since I was little. And, um, and my mom would have like tons of arts and crafts and we'd do like experiments and stuff like that. So um, I think, and the other thing is that I, I preferred math to like the verbal act, like verbal fields, um, like English or languages. So it's just where I gravitated towards. Yeah. So I suppose it's like a, it was an early age instruction for you that, that got you interested in STEM. It, do you think that that's one of the benefits of doing the, if you're an engineer, what would you do composition? It's engages at an early age. Sorry, can you say that question again? Yeah. So you yeah. kind of start at an early age with you, through your dad and your mum by talking about the space. About yeah. The space. So do you think that's yeah. like a benefit of the competition that we run because we try and engage in you know, a nursery, primary and secondary Yes. Schools? I think it's so important. I think once your eyes are open to asking questions about what's around you, about how the universe works, about what does the future technology look like, um, even in dance world, like, I think I come at it from a different angle than other people. Like, 
you know, people will be like, oh, the dance world was always like this. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask questions like, what does the future of the point shoe look like? Can we create 3D printed point shoes? Can we, what's, you know, what are point shoes gonna look like in space? Like, how are we gonna move in zero G? So I think this is so important and for everyone to join, it's like learning. I think the most important thing is like learning how to ask good questions or like constantly ask questions that are um, finding, seeking a solution and, but in a different way as well. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's the benefits of, of pursuing STEM fields. You just mentioned that you were going to mm -hmm. uh, do dancing in space or how to get things to space for dancing. What kind of steps are you taking? Because I'm, I'm thinking that that's one of your like final goals mm -hmm. that you want to do is dance in space. How, how are you heading to that? Um, so I had done this uh, BBC Astronauts Do You Have What It Takes program. So they had a real astronaut, Chris Hadfield, mm -hmm. and he led us through um what was quite a rigorous selection process um of what it is like so we had to like go into a helicopter and they dunked us like put us in capsule and then they flipped us upside down and dunked us in water and we had to like break open the window and come out and then they flew us to germany and we we simulated docking the soyuz to the international space station and um we had to do like i mean it was crazy what we had to do but that sparked my interest so much. And then, um, and then since then, like signed up to do private piloting license and um, keeping up to date with what's going on in the space world. And um, yeah. What was the hardest thing that they made you do? Was it the spinning round? Because I, I watched a video on the BBC website yeah. and the water rushing over your body. I don't know how I would do that. Actually, the hardest for me was the um, the simulation because I grew up without a, a TV or uh, video games, and so for me, actually, the hardest stuff was like anything that resembled the video games. Mm -hmm. So we had to dock the Soyuz the um, to the International Space Station, and I mean they're like six degrees of freedom, and it, you have to like maneuver it, and it was just. I mean, mind boggling. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Whereas, you know, the, the, guy, the guys that had done video games like their whole lives were like, this is so easy. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is so new to me. Like, I'm like, throw me in it, dunk me in water any day. Give me a, like any day. But this is like, ah. It's like, oh my Someone God. just said, I would have thrown up if I flew upside down. So we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> no well for me I'm like no I'd rather do that you'd rather do I'm like, it yeah 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 than uh the the controls yeah the video game like controls um so someone's asked would you design a special outfit for ballet in space well it'd probably take exploration right like I think right now the suits are so clunky so that's what's fun I think of the fusion of arts and science is because then it forces new questions and new breakthroughs to occur because for now they're okay with the space suits as they are because they haven't needed anything else but i think the moment you think about oh what would it be required in order to dance in space then next year new technology is needed and um it would just and, and then you solve a problem that they didn't even realize they had yeah something can't be solved until you need it yeah um do you like looking at constellations yeah love looking out into i mean looking at the stars right it makes us feel so unique and small at the same time <laughs> right to be like what if we are the only life out there what a bizarre coincidence mm -hmm. But then what if we aren't, you know, as well? And, um, and, and understanding the vastness of how, you know, that we, we don't even know the, like, you know, it just continues forever and ever and ever. Um, the galaxies and the universe, I mean, it's quite a, yeah. It's, my it's, thing. It, I love it's, it. it's difficult to think about, you know, it's, yeah. you don't know what, it's just answering the, the impossible. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. what do you think is more difficult? Do you think physics or do you think ballet? 
Oh, both are equally uh, difficult. I think the beauty of doing two things like that is when I am physically so exhausted from dancing, I am so appreciative of sitting in a library with a book. Like I'm literally just like, this is the best thing ever. I don't have to move. I don't have to be in shoes with my bloody toes um, and blisters. But the, on the other side, like when you've been studying for so long and you've been standing over experiments, like then I'm so appreciative of being in the dance studio and like, I'm like, oh my God, this is live music and I get to dance and I get to move. I'm not sitting in a chair. And I think that's really important. I think a takeaway that I would want to tell students is, you know, it's so important to be appreciative of your situation, of where you're at, of like the possibilities that are around you. Because I think that's when you improve the most is if you're appreciative of being in the room. Otherwise, I would say if people aren't appreciative, they won't make it. It's good to have that creative outlet for you as well, isn't it? By having ballet. Yeah. And I did watch a video on you your Dana life, I think it was, and you mm. have about 20 hours potentially in, in the lab. What That's obviously going to be so stressful because it's almost you constantly working for 20 hours. How do you have like a, a break from your work and what do you do yeah, to relax? I mean, oh yeah, uh, I mean, there were some days when it was like, tw yeah, 20 hours a day. <laughs> um, so uh, what I, but, but that's where I found having that balance really important or the dancing and the physics because then during the lunch breaks or any breaks, I would go and dance or uh, every hour I would do some sort of, you know, I might go into the stairway, like some hidden stairway and, and do 25 push ups or do a set of abs or something just to keep the blood flowing. And I think, um, especially nowadays and the way schools are taught, I think it's such a shame. But I think we're used to being seating, sitting for so long and we forget how important it is for the blood flow and the oxygen and moving our body and our spirit and our soul. So um, I think it just gave me so much more energy throughout the day because I was, I was continually um, pumping my uh, exercising mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in spurts. Someone really desperately wants to know, why do you like dancing with the robot? Oh, why do I love it? Um, oh, because, well, A, it was out of necessity because there was no dance Honest. classes. Yeah. There was no, I couldn't dance with a dance partner. Um, I mean, I literally just had COVID. So I also been stuck in here, isolated. Um, so it's been a wonderful sense of kind of having a a bizarre type of companion like a I don't know I, I get, people might take it the wrong way but uh like it's just been it's been fun it's been like super fun to have the robot and also it makes the way it moves inspires me to move differently and vice versa uh yeah the, so um what's <clears throat> it like in a space spinner I'm not too sure what that means, actually. Mm -hmm. Now that I've read it. Okay. Yeah, well, they had us like spin around and uh, that was, I was actually quite fine with that. Um, so they had a couple of tests. One of them was like, they spun us really quickly for, well, who knows, like minutes and stuff. And then we had to put like pegs in the hole, like to see our dexterity and to see how well we could put pegs in a hole. And um, I think because for ballet, I spin all the time. Uh, I, I, the spinning actually improved my, um, my putting the pegs in the whole thing. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So spinning was fine. Uh, yeah. Benefits of ballet. I've always watched, cause I know that you kind of spin your head uh, to mm -hmm. keep, is it to stop you from being dizzy? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's why. Mm -hmm. So to explain some more, um, did you get a job straight away? And what was your job like after uh, graduating and getting your PhD? Mm. Uh, well, good question. So there was a lot of pressure for me to go into perhaps more steady type of career. 
um, either staying in academia or what tends to happen with uh, physicists is to go into finance or go into that. But for me, um, I really wanted to dance again. I had decided to do my PhD first, but then wanted to dance. And so I, it was quite risky, but I, I put a lot of energy into retraining and thankfully, knock on wood or something, um, <laughs> well, it already happened. So I guess I don't have to knock on wood, but I got into um, Norwegian National Ballet. And so I was dancing there. And then that led to me being uh, invited as one of the artists in residence at Harvard Art Lab, where they allow space for artists to research. Um, and now I guess my career is a mix of like dancing, physics, robots, all of the above. Mm -hmm. And someone just asked, what do you love the most about what you do? Oh, by the way, can I just say, this is the most awesome like panel, like everyone's putting in questions. Like <laughs> yeah. everyone, I am sending you guys all a big like <laughs> shout out because you guys rock. I'm just saying like your participation is so awesome. Um, what do I love most? Was that yeah. the question? Yeah, what do you love most? Um, I love that it just, it changes all the time. And I have a lot of um, space to create and to collaborate with really fun individuals and to um, explore new things. So yeah, that's kind of. Someone yeah, has asked, yeah. what do you, what would be your first dance in space? I'm guessing maybe what music would you do? Ooh. Mm, mm. <laughs> sure. Maybe Chris Hadfield's Space Oddity. He sang that with his guitar up in space. So maybe I'll do like a sequel. Yeah. Um, where did you, where do you live? And where did you go to university? Well, Harvard and Oxford. Yeah. That's where I went. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. And then my junior year of high school, I did a school year abroad in Italy. And then I went to Harvard two years, then I danced with Cirque Ballet, then one year Harvard, then Boston Ballet, then Harvard, then Oxford. Uh, and then I've been all over the place. And currently, well, during lockdown, I was in London for a while. And right now I'm in Dubai. Wow. Yeah. So you've, you've visited practically this loads of different countries more than the average person probably <laughs> i would say in uh the year after my phd i was in 26 different uh cities based on for work yeah so oh. it's yeah it's do you think that's a really good <laughs> aspect of your your career is all of that traveling i i love tra like i've always i mean since i was super young i i loved traveling and, and going off um and I would spend my summers like all over Europe. Um, yeah, so I, I love that nomadic kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. so I, I don't think it's for everyone, but I love it. I'm, it's, yeah. How so I, do you get recognized whenever you go out? You know, do people come aw. up to you and, and have asked for photographs with you or autographs? Oh, that's really kind. Um, I, uh, well, that's really sweet. <laughs> Once a, a couple times. But oh, when the astronaut show was out, no, the, was that kind of the peak when people would rec recognize you? Yeah, probably. And it depends what world I'm in. Like if I'm, if I'm in the dance world, then I think it's different. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And someone has asked, have you had any uh, bad injuries whilst you've been dancing? I have been lucky that I have not. I've had a couple injuries, but I think the benefit of, um, sorry, the light outside is to me. Um, the benefit of having physics was that whenever I was injured in dance, um, I would be like, okay, the universe is telling me I need to now focus on physics. Mm -hmm. And so I would take the year and I'd go back to physics and heal properly. Whereas I think if you're in the dance world, there's a lot of pressure to get back onto stage. Um, and so people don't heal properly and then they have to retire quite early. And so um, for me right now, I'm, I'm at an age where most, practically everyone I danced with uh, professionally have, has retired. 
but because I, I've taken so many years off to dance, like my body still feels good. So I'm able to keep on going. Mm-hmm. Um, do you prefer dancing with a robot or do you prefer dancing with a human? Mm, good question. Uh, it's very different, I would say. I, I, really, I really enjoy both. I think there's an aspect of the human connection that you can never take away. Um, but there is a very much when I'm choreographing with the robot, it's like a puzzle. And I, when I was a kid, I loved puzzles. It's like trying to figure out, and it, especially for this robot, it's like a, it's like a six jointed thing. It doesn't have arms. It doesn't have legs. So I really enjoy thinking about like, oh, how does this, how can I make this robotic arm replicate the movement of a human, you know? Mm-hmm. And follow me. Um, what excites you about quantum physics? Um, oh, I love all the mysteries of the universe. I love, um, uh, I mean, it's just so bizarre. Like there are things that you learn and then you see it in the lab. Like we would do experiments, like every day I would do these experiments that are like, I mean, it was just like phenomenal. It was um, uh, the way that works, like superposition and entanglement and all these bizarre phenomena that, um, yeah, it's it's just really amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you think that your job is hard? Um, I, I really love my job. I love everything about it. I think that it's not for everyone. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of resilience. It takes a lot of failure and getting back up. Um, And, um, you know, so one can't, yeah. uh, So I would say it's, it's definitely not, you know, for everyone, because it's, uh, it's very, it's quite tricky, and it takes a lot, a lot of work, but I think um, I, I love that about it, Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have a dance idol? Do I have a dance, sorry? Do you have a dance idol? Oh, idol. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I mean, I always really loved Sylvie Guillen because she had, uh, she was known as like Madame No, because she'd always say no. Um, <laughs> like she's got like this very strong uh, um, personality. So I always kind of respected that. Mm-hmm. And other than dance in space, do you have any other dreams? Um, well, currently I think dancing uh, more for sure and dancing with the robots and um, yeah, I would love to go to space. And I think exploring how research and scientific research can be pushed further. Um, but, uh, but through an artistic standpoint. So like, you know, if I can publish papers, but um, asking artistic questions. And when do you go to bed? Cause you've, um... You work very hard. You've got a lot of responsibilities. How, like, what time do you go to bed and what time do you get up in the morning? Um, so when I was younger, I did not sleep very much. And I don't recommend, like, to everyone out there, like, I recommend sleeping. I think um, having high energy and being at the top of your game mentally and physically is really important. So I definitely did not sleep enough when I was younger. And that was just so silly because, like, something that would have taken me 20 minutes to read I was so sleep deprived, it would take me four hours. Mm -hmm. So it was just not, so then I was, I was, yes, I was working 24, like all the time, but a little bit unnecessarily so. So now I definitely make sure to sleep because physically um, uh, I need my muscles to uh, heal and to recuperate. Then my energy level's higher. So for each hour, I just have a lot more energy and, um, yeah. <clears throat> so you're such an inspirational sleeping. woman. <laughs> you're so inspirational, you know, for a lot of children and especially <clears throat> for women. Um, 
do you have an inspiration do you have an inspirational or favorite quote that you that you'd like to share i would um yeah i mean the one that really changed my life when i was in high school was it was a quote that's like nothing is impossible possible just takes time meaning and it what it did for me was like even though people have said things are impossible. Like I started too late dancing. Like I wouldn't make it as a professional ballet dancer. I wouldn't make it as a physicist. But that quote was saying, it's not impossible. Possible just takes time, meaning it's up to me whether or not I'm willing to put in the time and the energy to make it happen. Um, and so it kind of alleviates that doubt of, oh, will it happen, will it not? It's like, yes, it will, but it's up to me to put in the work. Um, so that was a big, I don't know, that was my, the quote that kind of guided me a lot, mom, a lot of my life. Hopefully people watching can, can take that and then they'll <laughs> stuff is just as great as you have. <laughs> so we are, I'm sorry for all the questions that we've not been able to answer. You know, we, we are running out of time. We have run out of time. Do you have just any quick advice that you would give to any of the young engineers that are watching today? I would say, um, find out like, if you're passionate about something, go for it, no matter what. Like even if people share their doubts, but if you're really passionate about it, go for it and take your time. I think there's a lot of pressure to be amazing right away at things. And that's not how in the long run, instantaneous, like immediate brilliance doesn't matter at all. So take your time, be patient with yourself and put in the hours and it will pay off at the end. I'm a big believer in that. Okay. So thank you for that, Mary. That's been really thank insightful. You. Hopefully yeah, people are really inspired by it. Um, so if you'd like to get involved in the competition, just visit www.leadersaward.com and you've got lots of different resources and information on there. Um, and Merit's social post is at Physics On Point. Yeah, Physics yeah, On Point so, with an E. Yeah, yeah so go over and go look at her Twitter. <laughs> Um, so thank you, Mary. It's been really good. It's been really helpful for, for the viewers and I hope everyone's enjoyed it. So I think that we'll end it there. Cool. Uh, bye, you. everyone. Thanks so much for these amazing questions. <laughs> yeah, we've had loads. <laughs> it was, it's amazing. Wow. You guys are great. I'm thoroughly like, this is the best panel I've ever been on. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. I'm going to end bye, it there. Bye, you guys. So thank you. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye.